It's 5.15, early evening, and a body's discovered in London. Who committed this murder is a mystery, and the clues are hidden in the Petrie Museum's Egyptian collection. I would like to come back here and uh, look properly. To see things are better than to read things, for me anyway. <laughs> Young adults are often noticeably absent among the museum-going population, and institutes try hard to get them through their doors. So while museums were once full of glass cases and silence, with touching forbidden, now there's often music, whiz-bang technology, and even live habitats. About 5.5 million people visit the Natural History Museum every year. That's about 22,000 a day. But despite the crowds here and at museums like it around the world, it's still a battle to keep the punters interested. Hey folks, we are a free museum, so you don't have to pay anyone or dinosaurs coming. Britain's government sponsors some national museums, so they're free to visit. But in return, they have to draw a wide audience. That our public programmes give people the amazing opportunity to actually meet scientists, to actually see some of the nearly 80 million specimens from behind the scenes for themselves, get their hands on those, um, on those objects with handling activities. Across London, there's plenty to handle on the Cutty Sark after the British tea clippers' five-year restoration. Ravaged by fire in 2007, its director says it's now more than a museum, it's a visitor experience, with an annual turnover of about $6.4 million. We invite people to comment when they're here. We do exit surveys, we do tracking surveys, uh, we do uh, focus group work to try and get a sense of what people want. Research, a key part of a museum's arsenal to keep an ever-changing audience coming back for more. Alexia O'Brien, Al Jazeera, London.